Hello, this is QTV News. I am Umudu Gajaga and thanks for joining us. First, the main local, international and sports news headlines. Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambers, the UN Secretary General Special Representative, is currently in the Gambia and has appealed for consensus on a new constitution. President Barrow has said farewell to 40 Senegalese military officers who had been in the Gambia since 2017. We report on a dramatic day at the TRRC as a witness reveals the names of 51 West African migrants seized and killed in the Gambia in 2005. In international news, yet another mass abduction of school children is reported in northern Nigeria. This time, more than 300 are missing following a raid by armed men. In sports news, Gambia's football family mourns the passing of Samga coach Suleiman Kuyate. Those were the main news headlines. And now, the news in detail. Welcome and thanks if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. The special representative of the UN Secretary General, Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambers, has urged political leaders to be flexible in the ongoing constitution negotiation process for a wide consensus that will bring a new constitution that Gambians can be proud of. Dr. Ibn Chambers was speaking today after an audience with the president at State House. Mumurulamin Choi was there and he now reports. Time is running out, yet politicians are still unable to deliver on a new constitution for the country after a bill for it was rejected at parliamentary level. Since then, the international community have resorted to diplomatic efforts to unlock the political deadlock between politicians about the draft constitution. A high-level UN delegation led by the UN Secretary General Special Representative, Dr. Ibn Chambers, have had an audience with both the legislature and the executive. We have also consulted with other stakeholders who are in parliament to find out about the constitutional review process and uh, uh, how parliament will ensure that they work in a timely manner so that everything will be on track. Dr. Ibn Chambers has confirmed the UN's continuous support for the Gambia's transition process and that it is following ongoing consultations with political parties on the draft constitution. Expressing appreciation and support for the consultations by idea led by former Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, the UN Special Representative urges our political leaders to be flexible at the negotiation table. Uh, we are happy that the ECOWAS at their last summit also threw their full weight behind it. So we urge all political actors to show flexibility and understanding so that uh, we can once again put this track on course so that we can move forward and I reach, uh, reach a consensus, a wide consensus to allow this uh, constitution to be adopted and uh, in time so that uh, at the end of the year uh, we can have elections that Gambians will be proud of. The UN delegation also visited the Independent Electoral Commission with a particular focus on preparations for presidential elections scheduled for December 4th. This year is an election year, so naturally everybody is uh, uh, focusing on the preparations that are being made to ensure that at the end of the year, on 4th December, we'll have peaceful, credible, transparent elections. We have uh, visited uh, the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC, and we are satisfied with the preparations that are being made. Of course, there's still some work to be done. At a time of a global pandemic, this audience between the UN delegation and the president could not avoid matters related to efforts towards fighting the coronavirus, which has affected the country's socio-economic development. Dr. Chambers stresses the UN solidarity with the Gambia during this health crisis. We will continue to work through our agencies such as WHO, uh, UNDP, UNICEF, all our agencies to support the Gambia to face uh, these challenges. And for the Gambia, we are not unaware. Being a tourist country, the additional burden that it has brought about. And so we hope that the Gambian people are a bit understanding that these are special moments that we are going through. 
the country's advice to consolidate the democratic gains and the developments achieved under the leadership of President Adam Barrow. While the UN keeps an eye on our country and extends a helping hand towards our development, critics have argued that what is needed for the common good is dialogue for compromise between and among our leaders and politicians to bridge the divisions between them. Mohamed Lamin Choi TV News. President Barrow on Thursday bid farewell to 40 officers of the Senegalese forces after completing their mission in the country. As Alusisa reports, President Barrow praised the officers for their discipline and professionalism. These officers arrived in the country in 2017 as part of the economic forces to maintain peace and stability. After four years in the country, they have now ended their mission and are set to return home next Monday when their replacements will arrive. In a brief but emotional ceremony at the State House on first day, President Barrow said there were mixed feelings for him as he bade farewell to this group of Senegal security personnel. Speaking well of, President Barrow applauded them for their dedication, professionalism and hard work during their four years in the country. Gurgi, Agua Gambi, Condanensien, Yulendigrem, Dilensant. As a show of appreciation, he presented certificates to each of the departing officers. The presence of the Senegalese forces in the country, he said, is a clear demonstration of the Senegambia spirit. President Barrow said the departure is another indication that there is an end to everything. He advises them to continue with their discipline and professionalism wherever they find themselves. He hopes those coming to replace them will emulate this badge and live amicably with their Gambian counterparts. Setnyai, the State Guard commander, attested to the discipline and professionalism manifested by the officers. Major Abdullah Kamara, Principal Protection Officer, said the officers came to the country as ambassadors of Senegal and their families and applauded the departing officers for living up to expectation. Major Kamara assured the president that the incoming batch will follow in the footsteps of these officers. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sisse. The TRRC on Thursday made a major breakthrough in the investigations into the 2005 massacre of West African migrants in the Gambia. In a dramatic development, Jibril Ngorseka, a former NIA operative, produced the commission the list of 51 massacred migrants. Babu Karsi has the rest of that story. Jibril Ngorseka is a seasoned NIA officer who joined this service during the days of the NSS and rose to the rank of Director of Operations in the Second Republic. He told the TRRC that he was called and ordered by his boss to go to Banjul and collect a group of arrested individuals and take them to the residence of Baba Job, a one-time close ally of President Jame. Seka said the day culminated with the July 22nd celebrations and upon arriving in Banjul, other security officers arrived at the scene, including Kausu Kamara alias Bombardier. The witness said the captives were beaten and tied up and forced into a bus and drove to the Kairaba police station where the arrested group were registered locally, and then he said this. At the Kairaba station, the Kairaba station. All their names were written. Saint Turiyep Nyungko Bindol. By the grace of God, I have the list. In Dimbali Yala Nak Mang Ame Lisbi. Mana from heaven. Alhamdulillah, Santa Yala. Could you send me the list? Holy cow. What did you do with the list that you took? It was home, but really, I just saw it when I was just released in 2015. We so all my documents were packed in one box. How did I just miss it? I can't remember. But I saw it in my documents. And I took it and gave it to somebody for safekeeping. Knowing that one day this will happen. The witness went on to narrate that the captives were distributed to different places before he left for home and only to receive a call the following day informing him that dead bodies had been found in the bush near Ghana town. Drove to Ghana town. Ghana town. 
found went and saw these corpses. Madam Gisnak Niwi. Shortly afterwards, they were put on on board uh, an ambulance. Who made that arrangement? I don't know. And they left for Banjul. Well, I think when I was still in Burfu, the the head of counter espionage called me. counter And said he is at the Kairaba, but he was told that a particular sergeant received eight people from the group. I'm not sure whether he was from the army or the police. Immediately he told me that. Looking at the corpses, I concluded for some reason that this may be the same group that was removed from the Kairaba. Ngorseka said he informed his boss at the time, the Bamarena, about what he saw, but later told himself that the issue is beyond their control as there were others coming from another place. The witness went on to narrate his own ordeal when the former government accused him of having knowledge of the alleged Nur Cham coup in 2006 and was incarcerated for 15 months and pardoned. His troubles did not end there. Ngorseka said he was again arrested and implicated in the Langtombong Tamba alleged coup plot where he went through severe tortures at the hands of the junglers before being charged and prosecuted and sentenced to death. Babu Karsi, QTV News. We will take a short commercial break and when we come back we will continue with local and international news stories. Welcome back. This is QTV News. A family in Farato have been rendered homeless after a fire outbreak destroyed their house on Wednesday. Our reporter Lamin Dabo visited the scene and his report is narrated by Omar Pijalo. According to the neighbors, the inferno started after 10 a.m. on Wednesday and they continued to battle it for several hours before succeeding in putting it out. The cause is blamed on electric short circuit. Srif Njai, a nephew of the victims, explains. Yesterday I was in our workshop and my mom called me and my mom called me. She said that our house was burning. Our house is burning. So I come quickly with my father. So when I come, I find my, my neighbors, our neighbors are hustling to get the fire. So we we our this thing, our next compound here. So they go and they go and bring the waters, but waters has been, you know, finished. So our house water is finished. So they go up to the next compound here. Now that one, their tank is empty. So they call the fire service. But when the fire service came, the water, their water was empty. So, but the, the people who was helping us, it's our neighbors. Al Fuseni so a neighbor told QTV that they were the first on the scene. <laughs> Now, 
My son was going to walk, and when he reached the Njai Kunda compound's gate, he ran back and shouted, Dad, Aisa Njai's compound is on fire. So when I got there, with the help of other neighbors, we started fetching water and pour it on the fire. What helped us was all the doors of the house were closed, and that reduced the speed of the fire. After several hours of struggle, we finally succeeded in putting out the fire. Biran Gay, the owner of the compound, thanked the neighbors for their help. I would like to thank the neighbors because through their effort, with the blessings from Allah, the fire was put out. It was my son's second wife who was at home at the time. May Allah bless them abundantly. We also like to thank QTV. Asya Tunjai, the owner of the compound, described the fire outbreak as a nightmare for the family. There are five rooms in the compound and each had a full furnished wardrobe, but nothing was spared. All our belongings, including clothes, food items, home appliances, cooking utensils, and furnitures have all Paris. This dress I am wearing now was given to me by Ajinde Kontejalo, a sister to Dr. Aisa Tuture. The clothes my in-law is wearing was also given to him by a neighbor. I am appealing to everyone for help. We also thank QTV for the outstanding services you are rendering to communities without which people may not know the severity of certain incidents. Fire outbreaks associated with electricity spark has been common in the Gambia, especially in the urban areas with many contributing such incidents to poor electricity wiring or low electricity voltage. The Njaikunda family is now soliciting for support at what is a very difficult time. Reporting for QTV News, I am Amar P. Jallo. Welcome back. And now to international news. Hundreds of schoolgirls are feared to have been abducted in the northwestern state of Zamfara in Nigeria after gunmen attacked the government girls' secondary school at midnight Friday. Of the 421 students in the school at the time, only 55 had been accounted for, a teacher reportedly told BBC. Mumudun Boj has the rest of that story. A group of gunmen some of whom dressed as government security forces, arrived at the school in Jangebe town with pickup vehicles and motorcycles and forced the schoolgirls into the vehicles, according to one report. But other reports have claimed that the armed men arrived on foot at the school. It appears that some of the girls were carried in the vehicles and others moved on foot. A teacher reportedly told the BBC that at least 300 students were unaccounted for after the attack. A spokesman for the state's governor has confirmed the attack but did not give any details. Worried parents were reportedly seen gathered outside the school and some of them running into the bush to look for their daughters. This is the second mass kidnapping in a week. The first took place on 17th of February in nearby Niger state where one student was killed and 42 people abducted in an overnight raid on a boarding school. The hostages are yet to be released. In December, more than 300 boys were kidnapped from a school in President Mohamed Buhari's home state of Katsina while he was visiting the region. The boys were later released. Armed bandits operating out of abandoned forest reserves in Nigeria's northwest have stepped up ransacking communities, kidnapping for ransom, raping and pillaging. These groups, according to analysts, are largely driven by financial motives, but there are concerns they are being infiltrated by others driven by ideology, the jihad militants who are waging an insurgency in the region, a decade-old insurgency that has killed more than 30,000 people and spread into neighboring Chad, Niger, and Cameroon. Increasing number of groups are joining what has been called Nigeria's lucrative kidnap for ransom industry and are quite brazen in their operations, according to Nigerian security and analyst Kabiru Adamu. He says the armed banditry has its roots in decades-long competition over resources between ethnic Fulani herders and farming communities. The herders are mostly nomadic and can be found on major highways and streets across the country, 
herding their cattle, but they have become involved in deadly clashes with farmers in Nigeria's northwestern and central states. The persistent clashes led to the formation of armed self-help groups called vigilantes by both sides for protection. These vigilantes are being accused of resorting to criminality, seeing kidnapping and pillaging as more lucrative than the herding. The biggest cow would go for 200,000 naira, but one kidnapping would fetch millions, Dr. Adamo says. At the height of the kidnappings in 2017 and 2018, the major roads connecting the capital Abuja in central Nigeria to Kaduna in the northwest had 10 kidnappings per day, with 20 different groups operating on the route, according to some sources. Nigeria's security challenges are manifold, and it appears that the central government has no strategy to return order to its restive northern region. The parents, however, might decide to do the little that they can, withdraw their children from school, which has understandably begun to happen. For QTV News, I am Mamoudou Mbouch. And now to sports news. Gambian football is in a shock following the death of Samga coach Suleiman Kuyate, which was announced on Thursday. He passed away after a brief illness. Suleiman is somebody who is very familiar to myself, and this is the report. Untimely disbelief and sadness grip many on hearing the news of Samga coach Suleiman Kuyate's death. At just 39, Suleiman had already achieved a lot in his coaching career. He was not only part of the coaching staff that won Brikamo United their first ever league title in 2011. As a full-time coach of the team, he later guided the team to their maiden calf Champions League appearance, playing against Esperance in the preliminaries over two legs, before being knocked out 4-2 on aggregate. Suleiman had also coached Gamtel for three seasons, before joining Samga two years ago in an attempt to get them promoted to the first division. He is described by many as a humble, kind and amicable person. Suleiman Kuyate had a special bond with the sports media. He was always available for post-match interviews, even when his team lost and was unhappy with the officiating. He will also be remembered for being a passionate football fan. We will remember him in this interview he had with QTV three years ago at the National Technical Training Centre, when his team, Gamtel, were training. And hence we are not considering why not we change and then try to uh, play con concentrate our training more on attacking. And then we try to change and then concentrate more on attacking. And then against Banjul United we are able to score four, against Bombarda we are able to score four. And also against uh, uh, Steve Vico we are able to score two which we want, believe that um, the moment we continue training on attacking, we can score more goals because Gambia, the only problem that we are having is we, are, we don't score goals. And this is a leak. The moment you start to score goals, then you will definitely try to win your games. Because through scoring two, three in one game, the moment a team can get that one, then automatically it means you win that game. May his soul rest in Jannah. Is with a heavy heart um, we received the news about his untimely death and we say our condolences to the family and we continue to pray for Suleiman Kuyate and sports will really miss him but his legacy continues. The GFF Second Division League match between Falcons and Red Hawks produced a spectacular second half with one of the players seizing the momentum, scoring and assisting. I was at the National Technical Training Center monitoring this game and this is my report. Pace at work in a match in which the second half had more drama than the first half. Fakeba Jame had a beautiful run along the right wing before calling in a powerful shot to give his side the lead in the 70th minute. Falcons became dominant and their attacking formation paid off. For the second time in the game, Fakeba was involved in this time around, providing an incisive true ball in the 90th minute for Aliu Fati to tap in at the bottom corner, doubling the lead for his side. Red Hawks did not pose much of a threat to Falcons. They were closed twice, with headers that both failed to hit the target. Fakeba Jame expressed happiness after scoring and assisting. I don't stop 
Vous avez confiance sur le fond de la Oui, bien sûr, j'ai confiance sur le fond de la Je suis venu à l'école. Je suis venu à l'école. Falcons coach Lamin Sane, who was an understudy in the first division for a few years before taking over the team, says he and his team are ready to face the challenge in the second division. Well, um, being in the first division, it is it was a good learning curve for me um, to know it is an environment that is more challenging than second division. But second division, every match is different approach, um, different mentality. So coming from division one to division two, um, it really helps because um, I, I tell you some of the realities um, that these boys will face um, when they are playing league football. Yes, um, the margin is wide, but again... Um, from this division, we have um, first division, so definitely I think that has helped the group to know some of um, my um, some of the inputs I've been putting across them, knowing that um, I have seen so many um, domestic football and I have um, given those as reference point um, any match we play in Division Two. Mudu Gajaga, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's have a quick look at our main news stories. Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chambers, the UN Secretary General's Special Representative, is currently in the Gambia and has appealed for consensus on a new constitution. President Barrow has said farewell to 40 Senegalese military officers who had been in the Gambia since 2017. We reported on a dramatic day at the TRRC as a witness revealed the names of 51 West African migrants seized and killed in the Gambia in 2005. In international news, yet another mass abduction of school children has been reported in northern Nigeria. This time, more than 300 are missing following a raid by armed men. In sports news, Gambia's football family is in mourning after the passing of Samga coach Suleiman Kuyate. That's all we have for you in this bulletin of the news. Thank you very much for watching and have a pleasant evening. Bye for now.